at home dad Watching Disney movies he never had His daughter digs through all the VHS Crushing the classics in a princess dress Informed like Scuttle, Kurt's got your ticket Making it real like Jiminy Cricket Most are off the Captain Hook, but if the Tweedle's dumb He'll be taking more shots than Bambi's mom Leave some raised like Simba, or crack like the Beast dishes He'll show you a whole new world You won't need three wishes Stay at home, Disney Musketeer March continues and kind of climaxes this week with the three Musketeers. I only had two Musketeer movies in the bin, so the final two weeks of March, of Musketeer March, I just added a couple movies that have sword fights in them. So kind of lame, but I do end the month with a huge Disney blockbuster I've been wanting to watch for a long time. But first, the three Musketeers. The year was 1993, and I remember my older cousin seeing this in the theater and then reporting back, Ha! They should have called it the Four Musketeers, because there's four of them in the entire movie. Ha -ha 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 -ha. Sh shut up! Shut up! I don't know why that always stuck with me to this day. He just made it seem like he was, like, tricked into seeing this movie, you know? Like, somehow this whole experience was ruined by math. I don't know, okay? So, ah, there was four of them! Uh, and it was called The Three Musketeers! Ah, ha, 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 ha. Anyway, I'm excited. I truly don't know the story of The Three Musketeers at all. So we press play, add for D2. That movie's a blur. Add for the Wolf Race movie. That was a great movie. Stay tuned for more ads after the feature presentation, it tells us. And I will not. Feature presentation, Walt Disney presents The Three Musketeers. We open with fiery underwater caves and operatic music. Great opening, I'm hooked. Uh, is that a boat? going through the water in a cave while stuff is on fire on the land. Are we on the Pirates of the Caribbean ride in Disney World? Okay, an army of men come out of the dark shadows dressed in red. We see the, the shadow of someone getting whipped. Tim Curry steps to this prisoner. The prisoner's pleading his case that he was just stealing food for his hungry family. Curry is the cardinal and says, sure, I will spare you. But then he walks away and is like, to the executioner. And they did not spare him at all. We see the shadow of this poor guy getting executed. Bad guy, noted. Now we have two pretty boys, Gerard and D'Artagnan. I believe D'Artagnan is going to be Robin with nipples in a couple years. They're practicing fencing. D'Artagnan's dad was a musketeer and was killed in battle, so D'Artagnan is about to leave for Paris so he can train to become a musketeer, one of the personal guards for the king of France, and make his dead dad proud. He tells Gerard he f***ed his girlfriend. Gerard is like, your dead father was a disgrace. To the Musketeers. This movie kicks ass. Uh, definite Prince of Thieves vibes though, and oh my god, yeah. All for one, and all for love. This is the song. I haven't thought about this song in 20 years. Anyway, Gerard wants to kill D'Artagnan, uh, but he's on his way to France, so he runs away after that sick burn. They have a horseback race and physical comedy. Uh, and escape hijinks play out like it's one of those stunt shows they perform every 90 minutes at a theme park Like someone hits something that hits something else which bumps into a guy on a ladder Whoa! D'Artagnan outsmarts him and Gerard falls off his horse D'Artagnan stops and tells him to say hi to his sister Okay, it wasn't Gerard's girlfriend, he f it was Gerard's sister Now we go to the Musketeer Clubhouse No, it's the King's Castle And the Grand Poobah Musketeer This guy in black, Captain Rockford The Cardinal's right hand man Says the Musketeers are officially disbanded And everyone is to report to their duty They're preparing for the upcoming war with England So it's off to the infantry Rockford has an eye patch And his costume looks like high school theater He sneers, all for one and one for all. Now it's like his mic drop moment. All the musketeers dramatically undress and toss their robes and swords into the giant fire pit that's in the middle of the ground for no reason whatsoever. Rockford the actor looks super familiar and yeah, he's the bad guy and he's in cahoots with the Cardinal. They're both bad guys. Cardinal Curry and Rockford talk about the what? About the three musketeers. There's three of them that refuse to quit the musketeers. He cuts three candles with his sword and he names them Athos, Porthos, Artemis. No, 
Aramis. Uh, but what about D'Artagnan? The unforgivable character that soured my cousin so on this daring piece of cinema. What about him? Speaking of D'Artagnan, he sees some men going after two beauties on another horseback chase. And as the bad guys pass underneath him, he like decapitates one with a bag of flour or cement or something before tackling the other guy off his horse and pounding him into the ground. The ladies come back and he's like, you're welcome for saving your lives. And, those, and the ladies are like, those were bodyguards sent from the queen. We're the queen's handmaids, you idiot. Handmaids, you idiot. Uh, and then one pulls a gun on him and then flirts with him. And he wants to get, like, all Gerard's sister with this girl. Uh, she's like, what's your name? And he's like, D'Artagnan. And she's like, I think I'll be hearing that again. He's like, yeah, girl, you'll be screaming it soon. Uh, her name is Constance. And she tells him the musketeers are disbanded or whatever, but... That part kind of goes over his head because he wants to see for himself. Uh, he goes to the king's castle and it's like empty. He walks in on broody Kiefer Sutherland looking at the dying fireplace. And I watch very few movies, so this guy will always be the vampire tricking poor Michael into eating maggots. Good stuff. Okay, so Jack Bauer is musketeer number one. Or musketeer number two, if we're going by my grumpy cousin's count. The mob starts attacking some people. I'm confused why D'Artagnan charges into the fray over this. Uh, but then he spills something on some guy and ruins his cloak. And this guy's like, the Queen of America gave me this cloak. And D'Artagnan says there is no Queen of America. And words are exchanged and now it's duel time. Clink, 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 clink. Uh, no, they, they, they're going to duel in the future. We cut to Charlie Sheen reading to some girl. And she's like rhythmically sighing. And it's just the shot of their, like, necks and shoulders, so you can't see what anyone's hands are doing. And this is surprisingly racy for a Disney movie. And I'm sure this part went way over my cousin's head at the time. Anyway, after Sheen is done reading to her in Braille, her husband barges in and shoots at him. And I think we have musketeer number three, or four. Charlie Sheen jumps out the window and lands on D'Artagnan, and words are exchanged, and now they set up another duel for the afternoon. He says, this is my third duel planned for today, so I guess I missed the first one. I'm guessing it was the vampire, so he's gonna... He has separate duels with all three of the remaining musketeers. Cardinal Tim Curry is having words with the queen. If I'm following correctly, he put her in an arranged marriage with the king, but the king is a bumbler, and then when she comes to complain to the cardinal about the crappy marital arrangement, he takes his shot at her. I mean, horrible abuse of power, and sick, and shady, but not a bad play. I mean, props for the long-term vision of it. He's creeping closer on her, and then the king comes in and is like, Why did you disband my musketeers? That should have been my call! And Curry's like, they were needed in the army, boy. And now they're having words. Curry takes his anger out on the bad guy in black, the cheese guy, Rockford. The cardinal is like, get things in order, get those three musketeers, because I imagine... The loss of your other eye would be inconvenient. Sheen and the vampire are celebrating in a local bar, sorry, probably tavern. And Rockford crashes the party and demands they step down with musketeers. That dude with the Queen of America's cloak cuts down like a chandelier and crushes all his bad guy henchmen, leaving Rockford, the Cyclops guy, standing there alone. And they go, run back and tell your boss we are not stepping down as musketeers. And now the three musketeers arrive for their duels with this kid, and they're all like, oh, hey, man, what's going on? Uh, is this how he becomes the fourth musketeer? This guy, musketeer number two, is legit outacting Sutherland and Sheen in this movie. It's like Sheen and Sutherland felt these roles were beneath them at this, at this point in their career, and this guy felt this role was above him because he is fantastic. He is outacting everyone and stealing every scene of this movie. The Cardinal's army arrives, and they want to arrest the three musketeers, and they're like, well, it's five on three, boys, and D'Artagnan's like, five on four, wait, four musketeers? Why would they do this to me? D'Artagnan tells them of his musketeer lineage, like his dad was a musketeer, and he's officially in the club. Clink, 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 clink. They fight off the guards. The musketeers are legit killing these dudes. Um, the three original musketeers watch now as D'Artagnan fights the captain, and he murders him as well. Four killers. Charlie says a prayer over one of the bodies, so I guess that's okay. Charlie used to be a priest. They tell the kid to go home and claim innocence, and he's like, what about one for all and all for one? Ah! Uh, the three leave, and D'Artagnan now steps up to Rockford, and he gets owned. He gets knocked off his horse, and he gets knocked out and tossed in the dungeon. The cheese man is like, where did you get this sword, boy? It belonged to my father! The tough talk delivery here is like army of darkness levels. Uh, the guy in black knocks him out again and says he's an idiot. Just like your father. Why does everyone in like pirate or whatever kind of genre this movie is have to have famous fathers? It's always about bloodlines and lineage. I want a movie about some guy who just practiced really, really hard. Tim Curry walks into the cell to address D'Artagnan. Now, the lighting in this movie, props, 
It's unreal. It's great. Okay, some important lady arrives now. She pulls a knife on his b This escalated. Uh, he's impressed that she easily killed her husband. Okay, so she's a bad guy or gal as well. This is Milady de Winter. And I'd like to spring and fall on her. Yeah, uh, he has a new mission for her. He wants her to, to deliver a secret treaty to England's Duke of Buckingham. He's making an alliance with England in a plot to kill the king and replace him. He needs a signature on this before his birthday on Friday, before the king's birthday party. Uh, this will ensure that the cardinal becomes king. D'Artagnan gets busted, spying on this and dragged in front of Tim Curry. D'Artagnan says, I came to join the king's musketeers. Cardinal asks him to tell him where, or tells him to tell him where the remaining three musketeers are hiding and maybe he won't behead him. D'Artagnan says, I don't know, and even if I did, I wouldn't tell you. Time for D'Artagnan's public execution. The crowd cheers. And he's about to be beheaded. Uh, a bower! Vampire! Other guy! Help! Gerard! Gerard, this champion, is in the crowd. He came to D'Artagnan's execution. He stands in the crowd. He's like, don't lose your head! And giggles. Yeah, f my sister, right? Uh, they pull a Young Guns too, though, and the executioners are the three musketeers in disguise and stage a dramatic escape for this kid. Uh, they steal and take off in the cardinal's carriage, and it's full of money. Is he a man of God? Or a man of money! Oh, snap. Uh, they throw all the coins and money out behind the carriage, which causes a mob to rush out onto the road to collect the money and stops them from being chased. That was good. That was, a, that was a great scene. That was really well done. Really thought out. Uh, they create some distance, but they're still being chased by the Cardinal's men on horseback. They hop out of the carriage, and I think it's also transporting gunpowder, so they light the carriage on fire and they roll it back towards the oncoming horse riders and it explodes. Yeah, this movie has picked up. That was cool. Even if there are four musketeers and the title says there's only going to be three, the Cardinal broods and releases a bunch of birds against a green screen. That was weird. There's a huge bounty on the heads of the four of them. But they go to the pub and party with the locals anyways. Funny guy is telling some lady that there's no difference between a queen and a barmaid in the dark. Yeah, go, go ahead. It wasn't my line, but go ahead. Uh, then he tells D'Artagnan that if he's going to be a musketeer, he has, he has to understand the quote... Art of wenching. And since it's the 90s, the female employee isn't repulsed by this talk. She's turned on by it. This guy demonstrates the art of wenching and forces himself onto this girl who just goes along with it. Charlie sh chimes in and is like, no, 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 my boorish friend. These sweet, delicate female flowers like kind words and poetry. And he says a poem to one of the other girls and she just pops up and starts making out with him. They're like, okay, you try it, D'Artagnan. And this guy hops up and bumbles his lines and says nonsense to a waitress before just forcing himself on her. And everybody claps. Oh, Wait a second, I'm pretty sure D'Artagnan perfected the art of wenching on Gerard's sister already, didn't he? Everyone gets up to dance, but D'Artagnan goes to check on the broody vampire in the dark corner. He tells him a sob story about how he took a wife and years later he found a symbol on her body, thus exposing her as a traitor. She said it was a false accusation, but he had her arrested and killed anyways. Oh, okay. So he never noticed a mark on his wife's body. So many questions. It doesn't matter. Uh, the next day they are going to intercept the treaty, but then the cardinal starts shooting cannonballs at them, and then all the king's horses and all the king's men, I guess it's the cardinals, come flying out of the bushes to kill them. They split up. Uh, from there we go to, I believe that's Constance, in a bathtub, as the other handmaid gal sits next to her and they giggle and, and gossip while the ones in the bathtub. But do you think a man or a woman wrote this screenplay? She's like, I know you're in love with D'Artagnan. And she's like, ah, oh, fetch my robe. And then she stands up naked in the tub, expecting her friend to put the robe around her shoulders. But suddenly the cardinal is behind her, putting the robe around her naked body. Uh, her friend just vanished into thin air. There's a lot of sexual tension in this Disney movie. Cardinal tells her it's tough being a man of God and denying himself things. Because I'm still a man. She says, well, it probably brings you closer to God. And he says, it's not God I aspire to be closer to. Uh, she shuts him down. He storms off and says, remember, kings come and go, but I am the thing that always remains. Now, here we go. D'Artagnan and Vampire Bower Sutherland are by themselves. And we find out that Kiefer knew D'Artagnan's dad before he could finish his story about how his dad was betrayed and killed by a fellow musketeer. They're ambushed and Kiefer's horse is shot. And I think he is shot. So he lays against a tree and he's like, I'll cover you, D'Artagnan. Make a break for it. And D'Artagnan gallops away. The Cardinal is now playing mind games with the king. And I'll be honest, this movie is incredibly layered and fast moving. I've been struggling to do a running diary during this thing. Uh, I haven't been this busy since like Mighty May, the Mighty Ducks movies. I feel like I may have been missing a few key points, but I'm doing my best. But what I do know 
is that this should have been called the Four Musketeers, am I right? <laughs> Milady de Winter finds D'Artagnan's body on the road and she brings him inside and wakes him up to this. This movie, honestly. He hops up and is like, where are my clothes? And she's like, I'm a countess and my husband is dead. She's trying to seduce this child. She says his clothes won't be ready for an hour. So he stands there naked while she pours him a drink and like, pause, okay, this countess, Milady de Winter, I'm sorry, this, this actress, like, She's absolutely gorgeous. She's like an 11 out of 10. And D'Artagnan wants nothing to do with her. D'Artagnan looks at her like she's a repulsive, dirty Kleenex. Which really, really makes me wonder. How urch scorthingly f***ing hot was Gerard's sister? Okay, so he's not naked. He's got shorts on. And then Countess tries to kill him, but he wrestles her to the ground. And then her personal ninja bodyguard breaks in and drops this kid with some sweet roundhouse kicks. This movie has everything. And I'm sorry, I'm like, okay, I'm having legit weird deja vu with this actress. Like, hey, how do I know this girl? Look her up. Rebecca, Rebecca de More, how do I know her? What have I seen her in? Okay, okay. No, no, no. Uh. When I was a teenager, I may have uh, recorded that movie off. TV late one night when my parents were asleep. Yep. Good memories. Uh, De Winter and her ninja guard arrive at the meeting point, but all the bad guys are dead because the three musketeers got there early and killed them all. And it's a musketeer ambush. The ninja does a bunch of pageantry with his swords. And then the one cool guy, the one cool musketeer just cuts a rope that triggers a lever and the ninja falls through a trap door on the floor that he was standing on. Uh, Sutherland comes face to face with De Winter and methinks this was his traitorous ex-wife. He demands that she hand the treaty over and I don't know, man. I mean, no disrespect to my wife because she's already plenty hot, but if I was married to her and I found out she was a traitor that was going to bring the whole kingdom down, I'd be like, yeah. I mean, if I found out this girl was kicking orphans, I'd be like, yeah. I mean, if I found out... Yeah, thanks. I, I didn't like where I was going with that either. I didn't like what I was about to say. And I missed whatever the exchange was between these two. But I think De Winter just surrendered or something. She's sorry and she hands over the treaty and tells of the Cardinal's plan to kill the king at his birthday party. Uh, now they all march the Countess dressed in white down to the river. What is happening? I'm not sure I've ever been more lost in a Disney movie than I am right now. They dressed her in white and they're gonna chuck her in the river? No, they're gonna behead her. Okay, she's guilty of killing her second husband. Like if that was my wife and she killed all her other husbands, I'd be like, yeah. Uh, okay, at the last second, Bauer comes to his senses and like, we can't cut this head off. What are you doing? And he yells, no execution, no execution. He stops. She asks for forgiveness. She gets it. And then she jumps off the cliff and kills herself anyway. Okay, my cousin watched this movie and his complaint is that there were four musketeers. Uh, the Cardinal and Rockford, or as I think of him, poor man's Christian Slater, have hired a skilled sharpshooter to kill the king, take the shot from the rooftop across from the castle during the birthday. So as the good and the bad guys prepare for the birthday celebrations, into the third act we go. Uh, the one and three musketeers with huge bounties on their heads blend into the crowd of party people by putting up their hoods. The king uh, and his forced marriage queen walk forward through the castle past the cardinal. D'Artagnan sees the sharpshooter set up ready for the kill shot across the street as the king and the queen make their entrance and stand on the balcony for the people. D'Artagnan makes a mad dash across the rooftop like old Saint Nick to get to the sniper before he can pull the trigger and he bats the gun just as it goes off. The bullet missed the king and everyone hears the gun and they scatter and scream. The musketeers remove their hoods and surprise! They pull out their swords and they face off against a whole cardinal army that wants them dead. But double surprise, a mob of strangers lined up behind them take off their own hoods and it's the whole musketeer army reunited. And I'm just going to ignore how they all burnt their cloaks and swords earlier in this movie and they're back. I don't care. I'm feeling this. Save the king! The musketeers are back, baby. They're fighting against the evil red army to protect the king. Charlie is saying the Lord's prayer left, right, and center is murdering people. D'Artagnan is still on the roof fighting the sniper. The good actor saves D'Artagnan by firing a crossbow into the sniper from below. Inside the castle, the king is still alive, but the cardinal is explaining his plan to him before executing it like an episode of Batman. Cardinal is going to kill the king and marry the queen and become king. It's a perfect plan, except the musketeers burst in. I hope we aren't interrupting anything. And I'll bet my cousin just like pumped his fist in the theater with that line. Uh, Dollarama Slater is like, on the contrary, 
you're right on time. And he and Kiefer duel. Sheen tries to stop the Cardinal from leaving. And after the Cardinal says, I don't answer to man, Sheen goes, you'll answer to God. But then the Cardinal pulls out a gun and blows him away. I didn't see that coming. I mean, I'm sure he's not dead, but it was a great swerve. Came out of nowhere. Poor man Slater is whooping that Sutherland butt. And Donatello D'Artagnan shows up and is like, that sword belongs to my father. And he takes his sword back. And then he tosses him a different sword. Because instead of just killing Rockford, he has to prove he's the superior swordsman. Old Kiefer gets up because the bullet hit his silver cross necklace. Uh, I missed it, but I'm guessing the man in black is the one that actually killed D'Artagnan's dad. Was that revealed already, or is it about to be revealed? Uh, the good actor is going through the catacombs under the castle where this movie started, and the torturer attacks him, and the musketeer pushes this monster man into some spikes behind him, and when that doesn't kill him, he's like stuck in the spikes. He drops this swinging trap door into him and sandwiches him into the to spikes, and he's bleeding from the mouth. Damn, Disney! Super Value Slater has one up on D'Artagnan, and yeah, he reveals. He's the one that killed his father, I call it. D'Artagnan doesn't like that, and he fights him without a sword. Some girl is seen approaching the shadows. I hope it's dry. Gerard's sister. No, it's Constance, but hashtag Gerard's sister. Uh, Rockford raises his sword for the kill, but D'Artagnan stabs him in the exposed chest to kill Discount Slater, and it's all greetings and salutations. Uh, he's dead. That's my Christian Slater. And D'Artagnan says, for you, father. And he reaches for his sword, but Constance grabs his hand. Sutherland is still fighting off an entire army. He makes it to the underground dungeon where the movie began, and the cardinal is escaping with the king and the queen by boat, but the mysterious hooded cloaked figure on the boat with them turns out to be... Charlie Sheen! And he knocks the cardinal into the water. Uh, the king and the queen make out now. I guess she thinks she can't do better than this guy after all. The four musketeers stand before the king the next day. The king asks, who saved my life? And they're like, it was D'Artagnan. The king says, I shall repay you. Name anything. Anything in the kingdom and it shall be yours. I mean, he's already had Gerard's hot sister. So the only thing left, I guess, is to become a musketeer. And that's his wish. He is knighted a musketeer. Hero music. The three Armageddon walk towards the camera. They tell D'Artagnan that his dead dad would be proud. And now they have to protect the king. And suddenly, D'Artagnan, yells Gerard. He's come to avenge the good name of his sister. Yes. Uh, D'Artagnan says, I'll handle this. And the other three go, hey, it's one for all and all for one. And the four of them charge to kill Gerard, and we go to credits. And yeah, this is the all for one song. Oh man, Cape, okay, don't tell me. Brian Adams, Sting, and Rod Stewart. I remember thinking this song was a rip off of everything I do, I do it for you, which kind of makes sense because I think this movie itself was a little bit of a rip off of Prince of Thieves, but you know, I'm gonna fall on my sword on this one. I thought this movie was really good, but I think I act if I actually watched it, 100% concentration instead of doing the running diary instead of doing this. I think I would have loved it. Uh, this is a movie you have to pay attention to the entire time. Scenes and dialogue that move the plot forward happen at a lightning pace. It was a fun movie, but... But... If I had one complaint, one complaint... It would be that it should have been called the Four Musketeers. Ah, 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 ah. My cousin, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, just kidding. If I had one complaint, I would have loved to see how hot Gerard's sister was, right? I think that's the theme of this movie. Okay, uh, I figured out who uh, Milady de Winter was. <laughs> who was this guy? Oliver Platt. Sounds familiar. I don't recognize any of his movies anyway. Stole the show. Fantastic in this movie. This guy, not so much. But who is this guy? Michael... Wincott from, ah, oh, he was in Prince of Thieves, no way. Strange Days, oh yeah, great movie. Holy shit. this guy's phenomenal. This was the bad guy in The Crow. Why did he suck in this movie? He's so good in The Crow, come on, man. Oh my God, go watch The Crow. Go watch The Crow. Sorry, what? This is, why is the, those are supposed to be three musketeers, but there's only four. See? That's what I think of. What do you think? What we have is a concern about Curtis Anderson. His interviewing style is not the best. His personal appearance is not the best. I was wondering if the man has some kind of a hold over the channel that uh, he's allowed to be employed for so long with the standards of journalism and personal appearance that he has. Thank you. Ha <laughs> ha